Hi, it's Randy from Reese.com here on the floor of MACNA in San Diego. I'm here with Dr. Mack, one of the uh, most uh, well-known coral vendors here in the industry. I'm sure most of you out there know him and have probably owned corals in your tanks from Dr. Mack. You can see the beautiful display behind us today. But today we're actually not going to talk about his livestock per se. Dr. Mack has actually been making some very interesting trips to Indonesia, to the source where many of these corals come from, and he's got some interesting news to report. Thanks for coming up. Coming on, Matt. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I actually go to Indonesia every six weeks and handpick corals. And in a recent trip, um, just by chance, I happened to be at one of the larger suppliers, and they had a meeting there of their association. So all the exporters are members of this exporters association. Okay. And you know they're sort of regulating themselves and dealing with their internal issues. And it was interesting with this meeting because they described it to me as they're trying to shut down the export of corals from Indonesia. So okay. obviously, that, you know, that piqued your interest. Yeah, right? that piqued my interest. Yeah, <laughs> because obviously, my livelihood and many other people's livelihoods are right. reliant upon export of corals from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. I think sure. actually, I think the hobby and the industry probably wouldn't survive. It's the largest exporter by far. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So what the issue apparently is, is that the Ministry of Forestry was handling the CITES permit. So to export corals, we need a CITES permit. Yeah. And they're the ones there in Indonesia which regulate it. So on the U.S. side, it's the Department of Interior, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which regulates the import of corals and manages the CITES permits on our end. Sure. On their end, it's the Ministry of Fisher, uh, Forestry okay. that had handled it for many years. That's interesting. So, yes, because yeah. you think they have a Ministry the, uh, of Fisheries, fisheries right. which you think would handle these issues, right. but they weren't. But they're trying to get the power to do that. Okay. So it's, it's really kind of a, yes, it's a power struggle, but it's also a financial struggle as well, because we pay a fee for each coral that requires CITES. So all hard corals require a CITES permit. Right. Cultured soft corals do not require a CITES permit. Any hard coral or even a soft coral, which is on a uh, piece of rock, which is considered a coral, right. needs to have a CITES permit. Okay. We actually pay a fee for each coral to get that permit. And so they're wanting to collect that fee, fee sure. within the fisheries division. The problem is they don't apparently as it's been told to me, have the infrastructure to handle the CITES permits. Interesting. So the forestry department, because they've been doing it so long, has the infrastructure to be able to, it has the personnel and, right. you know, all the apparatus to right. be do able to do it. Do they deal with it with other types of organisms in the forestry industry? I would assume so, so but maybe I'm not they sure. Just have more yeah, that I'm not more sure about as far it. as yeah. outside yeah. of our yeah. industry. Yeah, yeah, I think it's... For sure, obviously, it's the corals. Um, so anyway, what's going on is there's a new ministry of the fisheries, and she apparently is trying to make this power grab to get the corals and the CITES regulated under the fisheries ministry. And she's actually going out on the media there and saying, we need to shut the coral export industry down. We think it's damaging the reefs. Well, unfortunately, apparently she wasn't really as informed as how much mariculture activity is going on. Right. So the meeting that I happened to stumble into was an educational meeting about mariculture, culture, right. how active everyone is in culturing right. corals. Was she even aware of what mariculture was in this regard? I'm not sure, right. but I think they most certainly weren't as aware as they need as it to the be. extent. Yeah, yeah. Because really, as, as an importer, as a vendor, I really don't want wild collected corals. I would right. much prefer to have cultured corals because sure. they're much hardier, right. they're easier to keep. Mm -hmm. um, for example, euphelias, all the frog spawns, torches, hammers, they are notorious for shipping very poorly right. on wild collected ones. But the cultured ones, we have zero mortality. It's very interesting. So as a vendor, yeah. you know, a dead coral, is your most expensive piece because sure. you can't do anything can't with do anything that. With it, right. Even if it's more expensive on the, the cultured piece, we can still do something with that. 
sure. but the other ones, if they're dead, we can't do anything with them. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And the same holds true with chalices or, for example, pectinias are one that I've been buying a lot right. uh, there recently. Wild collected ones are very difficult to keep alive. Cultured ones are rather easy to keep alive. It's very interesting. So it's it's an interesting dynamic. It's troubling right. do you think for myself. Do you think that's because they're cared for in a particular way as they're maricultured? Like well, they are because they're handled more. Yeah. They obviously, they're more prized by them. They're handling them. They're in a sort of segregated area. Right. Um, and I think they are multi-generational. Right. So they're truly, most of the exporters that are really the good exporters are really doing what we've all wanted Wanted's them to that's, do that's, for that's years. Right, right, we've been talking about right. this forever. Right. right, they're not collecting the pieces that don't stay alive in aquariums. They're culturing more and more of the pieces. It's truly cultured because it's multi-generational. Right. I, I have videos even of their farms, going to their farms and seeing them. They're right. vast farms. And mm -hmm. you can see that these are truly cultured corals. You can see the euphelias. This is not something that was just cut right. from a wild right. colony. They put it on a base and called it right. culture. That does hack, go on. Hack and rack. Yeah, right. that yeah. does go on, but not as right. much right. anymore. Because, you know, guys like me that are there, you're seeing it yourself, and you're saying, I know that's not really cultured. Right. I don't want that. Right. I don't want those pieces. So, anyway, there is a little bit of a concern, maybe over the next few months, Right. there'll be this sort of power struggle right. and this grumbling about maybe shutting exports mm -hmm. down. But you know, we've seen that in other areas as well. And most of the time, you know, this usually gets, it gets worked sorted out. out. Right. And hobbyists generally don't really hear about these right. type of things, which is why we're doing this today. Just it's, as a little, exactly. hopefully just as a little, you know, side note, sort of uh, right. uh, say um, something like, you know, you kind of get a little more insight in seeing how the sausage is made. Right, <laughs> okay. absolutely. We really appreciate that. <laughs> right. It's very fascinating, yeah. and you're right. Most most people yeah. don't get to hear right. or right. see that side of it, right. and it's really, really important stuff, actually. It is. And it, it it's, is. in some ways, I mean, the, the political struggles are concerning, but the, exactly. the scenario in which they're occurring is actually encouraging. Right. Right? Right. So it's moving fantastic. in the right direction. So, so while I do have you here, is there any uh, anything in here you're particularly excited about you want to point out? Oh, there's some of the different Fabias and Favites I think are kind of the up and coming corals. Right. You know, you kind of have yeah. these trending corals. Like I said, the Pectinias are really interesting. Right. Very unique colorations. Right. And there's um, this very interesting acro. Yeah, it's very interesting <laughs> yeah. acro. Nobody actually, knows exactly what it actually is. Actually, Julian right? Sprug was over earlier yeah. and he was... Yeah. He said, well, I think it's Carolinianish, yeah. Ish. Yeah. Ish. So. Right. yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but there's always interesting corals, right. though. Right. So. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate for the you taking the time. Thank you very much. All right, take care.